All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. Um, let's go now to the last aspect of of um of the EIS document per se, which is the environmental monitoring and audit. So the environmental monitoring and audit should have um um or I would say uh, these are the things that we will be discussing with the environmental monitoring and audit. Um, we will be discussing what are the types of monitoring. So we have the compliance kind of type of monitoring and the impact monitoring. Um, when we say um, compliance, um, this is actually the list of um, the list of things that we have to comply and then the DNR EMB will be monitoring it. So that's considered as compliance monitoring. And we also have um, impact monitoring in which um, this is the kind of monitoring that um, that the, the, the developer or the owner of the certain project or activity and the DNR AMB um, will be monitoring based on its impact, the adverse impact of the certain project. Of course, uh, we will also discuss uh, purpose of the environmental monitoring and audit. Um, what do we mean by residual impacts? These are actually the impacts. Um, These are the kind of impacts um, that... I will actually explain that later. Um, what when we say residual impacts, these are um, um, impacts that are not direct. Um, it, it is also not. Uh, I will give you an example later as to an example of our residual impact. Of course, uh, we will have indicators, um, and we will also discuss monitoring plan. All right, let's go first to compliance and moni uh, compliance and impact monitoring. So when we say compliance, um, um, it's the monitoring of a project um, proponent's compliance of the conditions indicated in the environmental compliance certificate. So if the EDN or EMB will um, issue the ECC, the environmental compliance certificate, there are actually a list there of conditions that the developer and the area preparer um, would have to comply according to this list of conditions that the DNREMB um, stated in their ECC. Excuse me, when we say impact monitoring, it involves repeated measurement of environmental variables during the implementation of the project, excuse me, to determine the changes which may occur as a result of the project. For example, if you have a mining project and um, you will be affecting the water system of a certain area, then therefore, there will be an impact monitoring and, and there will be a regular assessment of the, um, of the water quality on that specific area. So that's an example of impact monitoring. So the, the, of course, the aim of the impact monitoring is to determine an impact if it has occurred and to estimate its magnitude. So we have to know as to, you know, what is the level of the impact? It is, is it so high? Is, it, is the risk so high or just regular risk? And of course, an essential part of the process is to establish that the perceived change is a consequence of the project and not a function of some other cause. So we have to quantify that, that because of the project, that certain adverse impact happened and not other, other factors or other circumstances that causes that adverse effect or adverse impact. And of course, impact monitoring needs need to establish the casual relationship between action and effect. So, of course, um, as we know, um, there is always a, a, you know, a relationship between um, action and effect. If this is your action, there is always a relative effect to that. And that is being quantified or could be quantified during the impact monitoring. So, when we say um, impact monitoring of residual and mitigated impacts, this is the this is actually 
um, under the Philippine Environmental Law, law which is monitoring is carried out by a multi multi-sectoral monitoring team or MMT. So the monitoring information um, in which um, there are types of indicators to be used for a short-term and long-term monitoring. So that is actually also indicated in the EAS document as to what are these um, indicators that should be monitored. Uh, for example, again, if you are doing a mining project um, and then, for example, um, it is likely that the water system will be affected by the, your mining project, then therefore, um, there are parameters of that water quality ass assessment that um, should be monitored in a short term, for example, every week or every month. And there is, or there should be also a parameter of your of your water that should be done in a long term monitoring, maybe once a year or a may, maybe every three years. So of course, um, in the monitoring information, there is um, the procedure for the data collection should also be included or indicated. For example, um, for um, for for example, for nitrogen, um, um, nit for example, for nitrates and water or nitrogen, are you um, are you going to analyze total nitrogen or available nitrogen or nitrogen in a form of nitrates? So you have to indicate that in your procedure of, for data collection. Um, you have to put there as to what um, specific um, methodology that you have to use or you will be using. For your us, of course, to easily um, compare, because, you know, it's quite hard, for example, for nitrogen. Um, on, on the first year, you collected, uh, you analyzed nitrogen, um, you analyzed total nitrogen. And then on the third year, you analyze available nitrogen. Of course, this got to, um, you know, well, they analyzed nitrogen, but, you know, it's on a different state because on the first year, you quantified total nitrogen. On the third year, you quantified um, available nitrogen. When we say um, available nitrogen, um, this is in the form of N2O. Um, it's an oxide form that is available for um, available for um, cellular activity or or um, or consumption of um, marine biota. So N2O, um, like N2O, can be absorbed by plants. N2O. Um, in a form of water because it's an oxide form. But however, when we say total N, it's the elemental N. So all kinds of N, all state of N, N may it be in oxide form or any form of N um, is being quantified. So of course, it's quite hard to compare total N and available N. So that's what I meant by um, procedures for data collection. You have to establish as to what specific procedure that you will be using during your data collection. Of course, um, in your monitoring information, you also have to indicate equipment and personal uh, requirement. So what are these equipments that you have to use and the personal requirement that will be doing the data collection or will be doing the monitoring. And of course, the rules and responsibilities of the organizations and institution for data collection, interpretation, analysis, and reporting of findings. Um, because on some um, EIS document, um, they actually put there, like, there is a set of people that will be collecting. There are a set of people um, that will be interpreting the data or doing the analysis of the data. And there is also a set of people that will be writing um, the findings. Uh, at the same time, there, are also, um, there is also an EIS document that they stated there that whoever collects the data, interprets the data, analyzes the data, and report or write the data or the findings um, based on the data. All right, so that's the end of um, for today's lecture. Um, uh, thank you for uh, listening. Um, um, yeah. Um, actually, I, I still have... Um, Actually, I still have um, a few, I think I still have a few lectures, but I opted not to lecture that first because, um, you know, with the expense of time. So I, I can still, um, 